Welcome back on the Dr. Ridwan Show, health information you can use. In today's episode, we're talking about low testosterone with our guests, Dr. Ajay Nehra and Dr. Matt Rosenberg. So my question to you, we have a patient who has been diagnosed with low testosterone or in medical terms, hypogonadism. How is that man treated? What are the options? There are a lot of options. And the nice thing is they all are efficacious. Options of what? How do we treat? What do we give the patient? Right. Well, obviously, we're giving them testosterone. So so how are we giving them the testosterone? And, you know, again, they're all efficacious, but but it comes down to a discussion with the patient. Now, we have injections, we have gels, we have pellets that you can put into a patient underneath the skin. Um, We have patches. We have uh, agents that go in your lip or in your mouth. It's various, and and not as an oral pill, forgive me, it's as a patch in your mouth. Right, as a sticker. As a sticker inside inside the mouth. But the the trick here is to sit down with the patient and say, "This this is what's important about each one. These are the risks, these are the benefits, and what would you like to do? Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these different methods? You know, w- w- there's a lot of data, a lot of history with injections. We, we know that clearly. But again, in general, they all have certain advantages. They all have certain disadvantages. From my perspective, we need to look at every patient. Are they able to sustain are they going to be helped by a certain product that's potentially superior than another competing product line? And frankly, that's a discussion that we need to have with the patient itself. Um, some patients are very adverse to long needles being injected. Some patients don't like long-acting uh, depots or, or testosterone I- implantation. Some patients really like the idea of a short-acting product. But I think in general, you look at the serum testosterone, you look at the blood uh, signs and symptoms, and you individualize each modality of treatment option with them as you review how best to overcome this low T level. And formularies. We have to remember formularies. So uh, insurance questions, whether whether the, uh, the, the patient insurance will reimburse or cover right. a, a certain product versus the other. So it is good that we have options. Yes. It's good for our patients that there are several options. Uh, once the treatment is initiated, but the, before the treatment is initiated, uh, the question is, are there any contraindications to testosterone replacement therapy? Uh, and if so, what, they, what are they? That, that's an, another very important question that patients need to know. Active prostate cancer is indeed a contraindication to consideration for testosterone replacement. Additionally, breast cancer. Breast cancer in the man. Which is, which is rare. Rare, infrequent, nonetheless, needs to be ascertained. It's a contraindication. And if it is, it's a contraindication. Patients in this day and age may have allergies. And and that's something, Dr. Rosenberg, how do you how do you bring up the issue of allergies? Because they may not have may, they may not have been exposed. Right. But they may have taken a medication before, had a reaction to it, a new medication comes out on the market, they come in the office, say, Can I try this? And I need to address the fact that that allergy may have been or may not have been associated with that. So a known, an allergy to a known part of that substance. But, you know, that actually um, is is an important point because the patients will frequently come in after having failed one therapy and they may have seen another doctor, failed it, and then they give up. And I'm like, no, there are other options for you. So let's look at those things. So just as you had mentioned, options are really, really important with this. So let me ask you, once uh, the treatment is initiated in a man with low testosterone by giving that man testosterone through one of the options we discussed, either injections or gels or patches or pellets, how is that man followed up in terms of safety? We learned about how it is followed up for 
the purpose of efficacy, how about safety? What is paid attention to? I mean, again, a very valid question, very important question. It's safe to say anybody above 50 who's on testosterone replacement should be monitored with PSAs initially on a three-month basis. PSA is a blood test. It's a blood test specifically for the prostate. For prostate. Now, if you have a family history of prostate cancer, you may want to initiate that even at the age of 45. You may want to get serum PSAs or a blood test done every three months and continue it. Patients traditionally with no family history, you can get a blood test for the prostate on a six monthly basis. And that's a discussion that you're going to have with your urologist or your internist itself. There's an important point here in that um, we, we all are aware of the recent changes and recommendations from the United States Preventative Task Force that's put checking a PSA into question. Yes. But that is for general screening. In a situation like this, which you're using testosterone, I would say this really breaks out of the general population, and we want to keep an eye on that. But it's important for patients to know for safety, yes, we're watching that because we're doing our due diligence. Maybe even your PSA might go up a little bit because sometimes that happens in the patient with low testosterone levels. In the initial case, three to six months, it might go up. But we need to be very clear that there's no data out there at all that shows that testosterone replacement causes prostate cancer. And patients are worried about that. And I think we can safely tell them as providers, no, it's not a risk. One of the questions that comes up on our uh, website is uh, a straightforward question. Does testosterone treatment or testosterone therapy cause prostate cancer? It's a great question. Historically, huge concerns. Uh, and, and I think the data now is becoming much clearer. And it's safe to say the current tr age data shows that it really doesn't cause prostate cancer. That doesn't preclude us from suggesting that you can not monitor by getting a blood test. I'm not here suggesting that, but I'm saying, say, suggesting that the age old theme that it causes prostate cancer, at least the current trends are suggesting to us it does not. And uh, that means that uh, uh, we can treat men with low testosterone after we rule out prostate cancer initially because prostate cancer is a contraindication for treatment, but once that's ruled out, treatment can be delivered safely and the prostate will continue to be monitored. Are there any precautions that you, you know the practitioner pays attention to while treating men with low testosterone? Sure, and just before we go there, I want to mention a point or, or comment on a point you just made about screening, about the prostate cancer being caused by this, and once we've ruled it out, that's why we get the PSA. Correct. And it's also why we do the digital rectal exam. Those are two very, very important points points for us. And it's the combination of the digital rectal exam and the PSA that gives us the highest sensitivity for ruling this out. Yep. Now, in terms of precautions, there are a couple. You know, if you look at the guidelines, the precaution of benign prostatic hypertrophy, which means the big prostate, which big the prostate. big prostate blocks the tube that we pee from the urethra, so you're going to develop a bad stream, lower urinary tract. So that's not a contraindication. It's not a contraindication. It's, just it's a precaution. Yeah. You know, if your symptoms get worse, you need to let us know. Okay. If your symptoms are bad in the beginning, I may not want to treat that until I've treated these bad symptoms. Um, sleep apnea is a precaution. You want to make sure that's treated and not getting worse. Uh, a high hematocrit, which is the red blood cell count. Red, red blood cell count can go up with testosterone. It can go up with testosterone in the same way that a low, t low level actually may give us a di or help us make a diagnosis of low testosterone. Right. The same way if we have a high count, we don't necessarily want to give them testosterone until we've dealt with that. What other precautions do you talk to the patients? I think, I think those in general are, are really the key issues that one should discuss. And uh, um, other than the hematocrit, sleep apnea, the, the voiding issues which are infrequent, those are pretty much the only concerns. How about the, the, the man uh, who is interested in fathering children 
is uh, the treatment and of low testosterone in that man if he happened to have low testosterone is the treatment with testosterone or are there other options? You know, and, and this is where patients get spooked. They think taking testosterone in any of the preparations will actually enhance their sperm count. On the contrary, it's just the opposite. And that's why you need to discuss these issues very critically with your physician in order to have the best prognosis for parenthood. Right. Right. So it's a whole different mechanism that creates testosterone, that creates sperm, and if you give them testosterone, you're actually turning off that whole axis, so you'll make a low sperm count presumably even worse, and that's the way that I explain it to patients. So, so to remember from this is that uh, men who have low testosterone actually uh, are treated with testosterone, and testosterone can be delivered to the body in a number of options, can be delivered as injections into the muscle as uh, gels or patches through the skin or as pellets uh, under the skin mm -hmm. uh, implanted for long-term release or uh, as uh, stickers inside the mouth these are treatment options that are generally effective and safe but there are some advantages and disadvantages between the two the different options uh, that need to be discussed between the man with low testosterone and uh, his doctor. Uh, in addition, uh, it is important to remember that um, there are contraindications to treatment with testosterone, including active prostate cancer, uh, breast cancer in men, which is rare, but it's important to know it's a contraindication, and also uh, allergy to a specific uh, product. There are a number of precautions, uh, and the treatment of testosterone deficiency or low testosterone is monitored after initiation of treatment both on the efficacy side and the safety side with symptoms and signs and blood tests and this is something that is monitored as the treatment is going along. This is very valuable information. Uh, this is Dr. Ridwan on the Dr. Ridwan show. Health information you can use. Stay on www.drridwan.com